You got me. Why? Why? Oh no. Happening Z Hood. All right, today is the day where I bust out the new to me transmission fluid exchange device. And we're gonna attempt to uh, save the transmission on that Chevrolet Cobalt out there. That's the one with the blown up radiator that uh, had the trans cooler integrated into the radiator and the cooler leaked and the systems communicated transmission fluid into the engine coolant and engine coolant into the transmission. And that's not good. That's not good for either one of those systems. Uh, last episode, we pulled out the radiator, replaced it with a new one, flushed out all the trans fluid contaminant from the cooling system, and now we're gonna try to flush out all of the transmission fluid and remove the coolant from that system. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one flush on the system first, then I'm gonna lift the thing up in the air, pull the pan down, change the filter, drain it all out again, put the pan back up, and then we're gonna perform a second flush on it to make sure all that contaminant or as much of that contaminant as possible has been removed. Now, seeing as how that's a BG machine, uh, those are a little bit difficult to acquire. And uh, I was able to get one because I became a BG dealer here at my shop. Uh, because of that, I have some of their products and I'm going to use their Quick Clean, not sponsored, that's just what I bought, but I'm gonna use some of this Quick Clean and uh, it's got some transmission conditioner, but I'm mostly interested in the cleaner. Uh, having used these products before at the dealership, I'm aware of their potential and this is, uh, this is good stuff right here. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we can save this transmission from certain and inevitable destruction. And so if I can save it, that means it's not inevitable. That means I saved it. Door unclicks. By the way, if, uh, if you missed the first video on this particular car, have no fear just go down into this video's description and check the links and it'll be the first one that's available to you so anyway we've got ourselves a chevrolet cobalt it's got the 2.2 liter it has the same mileage as it did last time because i didn't drive it 104,663 miles on the clock so first thing i'm gonna do on this beautiful sunny floor today is swing this bad boy into the shop we're gonna put one can of that cleaner into the unit and we're gonna let it run for a little while. Uh, while it's doing that, I'm gonna prep the machine and fill its reserve tank, and uh, then after that, I'll connect the machine to the transmission cooler lines, and then we'll perform the first, uh, the first service on this trans. Parking is the auto. Windows down so I don't get locked out. Things happen. Powering down. Pew. Ah, it's doing it again. Come on, hood. Don't do this to me. You got stuck, uh, you got stuck last time. Wait, 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 wait. It must be early in the morning. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think I forgot to pull the lever. You, you guys knew that, you saw that. I didn't see it, because I was here, but you saw it. All right, there's our 2-2 Ecotech. Let's see, our trans cooler lines are located right down here on the radiator. We're gonna tap into the system right there, I think. It's a good spot. I believe I have enough adapters to, uh, to get this done. Now, like I said, this is a new to me machine, not a new machine. The brand new ones are remarkably expensive and way outside of my budget, but I got this one used and it should be just as good. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pop open that little, uh, the cap for the transfill hole. Set that aside. We're gonna probe this area with our funnel device go get that down in there and then we'll put some cleaner in there and let this thing run and circulate all that cleaner can kicks yeah that's right I can open cans with one hand look at that skills pour this stuff in there. all right let's restart this engine let this thing come up to temperature let the cleaner circulate through and do its job. And uh, we'll go ahead and prep this machine. We're gonna need a power supply. This, uh, this particular machine is equipped with a pump. There are other versions that uh, do not have a pump and they rely on the transmission pump, but this particular version has an internal pump, so let's power this guy on. We're gonna need some, uh, some electrons here. And that looks like a good ground. Sure. 
Ah, machine did something. Cool. All right, so what we need to do here is we're gonna take this case of transmission fluid and we're gonna fill it up inside of the reservoir of, uh, of this machine, okay? Now, normally I would do uh, transmission services uh, as a maintenance item, not as a uh, repair, but since this thing has uh, contaminated fluid, this is the best option to save it. A uh, simple drain and fill and a filter change won't do it. And if you don't have a machine that's capable of doing a positive displacement fluid exchange, then uh, the drain and fill method is gonna require like gallons and gallons and gallons of fluid. And it'll never be diluted enough to uh, where the contaminant is no longer present. So uh, fortunately, I've got this device that's gonna save the day. going through my, uh, my bottles of fluid right now and then I've got some big bags in the box that uh, BG actually sells and uh, that's going to be the fluid that I'm going to primarily use moving forward. Like I said, I'm a BG dealer now. Weird. Four, five, six, seven, like eight quarts or something. That's not enough. This is a 16 quart machine. Filling halfway complete. Okay, so a real quick change of plans. Since uh, I'm a little short on fluid right now, I went ahead and ordered uh, another case of this stuff. Now, like I said, I don't want to use my premium fluid just to flush out the contaminant. I want to do that last. So I ordered another case. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and shut this down, and uh, we can go ahead and connect the lines on this thing. And uh, we'll actually get a good visual indicator on what the fluid condition looks like, because it's going to pass through this sight glass right here. Really cool feature. All right, reaching in there. Let's power this down. Beep. we're back inside of the engine compartment and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, remove this little clip here to disconnect this uh, transmission line we're gonna see the, uh, the level of nasty again the catch is I'm gonna remove this clip without losing it I may need a second tool there are release tools uh, for these clips you guys have heard me say that before I just choose the uh, the pick and the screwdriver method it's higher risk but uh, I find it to be easier it's like surgery come out little clip oh, oh I'm losing it hang on Got it, got it, saved it, saved the day. There's my clip. Now I cannot lose that. We need to put that back. Wiggle that line. Yep, there's that strawberry milkshake again. Yummy. You want to taste? Don't do it. Okay, there's a couple little adapters that are necessary. This one uh, emulates the size and shape of the factory line, so we're going to plug that one right into the radiator. And then there is a, uh, a female connector, and that one is going to connect to the line. There we go. Now there's rubber seals inside of there, so it, that's what makes the seal. And then we can connect this little adapter here to the lines on the machine, and this adapter here to the lines on the machine. But first, we need to secure this fitting in the radiator, because if you recall, I just removed the clip. Okay, so rather than going through all the rigmarole of a uh, putting that clip back in I'm just gonna shove a paper clip down in there in lieu of the clip of the actual clip and that will secure this uh, this fitting while I perform the services it's just a temporary thing don't do this like as a permanent uh, solution 
because that'll shear off and break and then your line comes out and then uh, then your car dies that would be bad all right everything looks secure I'm gonna go ahead and connect the service hoses from the machine okie dokes it is now time to uh, restock this engine all right hose is coming in let's get these guys connected There's one, numero dos. All right, let's go ahead and uh, restart this engine and uh, we'll check this for a leak and then uh, we can go ahead and start uh, or continue the service. Instant leak check, what do we got? What do we got? What do we have? We have no leaks, this is good. Oh, look at that. There's our uh, our current fluid condition. That is nasty. See it at the top right there? That's the current fluid. I'm gonna finish filling this thing up. I had a delivery from the store, so I've got uh, another case of trans fluid. We'll refill the machine, and then we'll start the service. I believe this thing is nearly full. It's no longer taking uh, any, more, uh, any more fluid. So yeah, we're almost full here. Okay, so our gauges are telling us we have pressure on both sides. That means we have some flow going through the system. Yeah, that line's starting to get a little warm. That tells me everything is flowing. Let's go ahead and start the process. The process has begun. So what this machine is gonna do, you can see it flow right here. See how it's changing colors? There's a big tank inside, it's divided into two chambers. One chamber is new fluid, the other chamber is going to be the old fluid from the transmission. As the pump in the trans sends that fluid into the machine, it's going to fill the empty chamber. As the empty chamber fills, it's going to press or pressurize the new fluid in the other chamber. It's going to send that back to the line and then back into the system. Oh, there we go, we're already clean. Yep, that's our new stuff coming in. That's our old stuff coming out. And we'll know the system or the exchange is complete because we're gonna see a pressure drop on the other side over here. Once we see that pressure drop, then we know that the, uh, the chamber is empty and, and full, and then we can go ahead and shut it down and pull our lines and uh, we should be done with the service at that time. However, this, like I said, this uh, specific instance, after we service this initially, we're gonna lift it up pull the pan, change the filter, drain all the fluid again, fill it back up again, run it again, and then we're gonna do another fluid exchange uh, with another 16 quarts of fluid. So we're gonna run 32 quarts of fluid through it with two cleaning pans and uh, actually 30, 32, 30, 36 quarts because the drain and fill is gonna take five to six, four or five quarts. There we go, math, math and words. Anyway, right now it's a waiting game, should take about five, 10 minutes. I'll check back in with you guys in a moment. Okay, we've got our pressure differential going on here. We're at like 18 pounds on the new side and 30 something pounds on the used side. So uh, at that point, the bladder has exchanged all of the fluid. Oh yeah, I, I cracked this open for you guys. Here's the tank inside. Like I said, a two chamber, two chamber tank. We've got plumbing to all the valves and switches and solenoids and the pump down here for a forced flush, which uh, we don't need to do. So, let's go ahead and shut this down. Pew. And we'll disconnect the machine, uh, pick this thing up, and then pull the trans filter out of it. Okie dokes. The machine is disconnected. I put the trans lines back on the radiator so I can bring this in and uh, put it on the lift. We're gonna go ahead and move this thing on up. Let's make sure it goes into gear. All right, we're still moving. This is good, okay. Let's lift it up and pull the pan and go ahead and uh, get that filter removed and then we're gonna do another flush on this bad boy. Maybe it'll live, maybe it won't. You gonna make it? Yep, gonna make it. Looking good, looking good, looking good, okay. Yeah, we're good. Right there, that looks good. All right, parking's the auto. Parking down. <laughs> Moving on up. And we want 
this one all the way up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna roll that drain pan over here. We're gonna pull this pan down, replace the filter, refill the fluid, and then we're gonna do one more flush on it. Look, we can see here from the spillage from when I uh, disconnected those lines that we are getting some nice pink fluid here. And the old fluid is the, uh, the milkshake colored. So that, that's good, this is good. Oh, roadblock. What I run over, a staple? What was that? Rock? Okay, right here is good. What do we need? Uh, eight mil. Okay, we're going in. Eight mil bolts. Let's pull these guys out and, uh, and drop this pan. It's not a bolt, that's a peg. Now the task here is gonna be uh, not covering myself or the floor in nasty transmission fluid, which I've just failed at. It's already on the floor. It's okay. Things happen. Pink blob is coming for me. Yeah, we're just gonna let this hang out and drain for a little while. It's nasty. does kind of look tasty. I'm not gonna lie, it really does look like a strawberry shake. Except this one, if you drink it, it'd probably kill you. But it is, uh, it does look like it's thinned out quite a bit. Let's take a look in that pan and see if there's any debris in there. Hmm, what do we have here? More pink nastiness. You can see there is two different colors of fluid here, so some of that's the older stuff. It appears to be separating from the newer fluid that I installed. You see how there's like the cream and then there's the pink? This stuff right here looks like clutch material. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bad sign. Yeah, there's a bunch of it right here, clutch material. Yeah, this thing must have been slipping. Well, hope we can save it. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this filter down. We don't need this thing anymore, it's uh, it's going away. Ah, it got me! Why? Why? Oh no. It's okay though, check this out. I've got shiny new uniforms, so when I get myself trashed with uh, with oils and fluids, I can just get a new shirt. Still nice and shiny. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. What do we got? What do we have? What do we have here? We have. Ooh, a rubber gasket. I hate these. I'm reusing the old one. The old one's a hard gasket. And uh, there's our new filter. So let me show you what I speak of. I'm talking about these gaskets right here. Because I know some of you guys are going to re-ride out because I'm going to reuse this gasket. Especially when I have a new one. But looky here. See? This is a thick, multi-layer steel gasket. Oh, man. No, no. Single-layer steel. And then... It, the steel is embedded inside of the, the rubber, which actually makes the seal. Now, the gasket, the replacement, this is just rubber. Now, what that means 
is that when I uh, tighten the bolts on this gasket, it's only gonna compress enough until the steel is met with the fastener. When I tighten the bolts on this gasket, it's gonna compress the gasket, particularly in the areas where the bolts pass through, which is gonna create an uneven sealing surface. And that's what we don't want. This is why I do not approve or do not prefer these types of gaskets right here because they're prone to leakages. So first thing we're gonna do here is get rid of as much of this fluid as possible. Then we'll do that with some shiny. Ah, I didn't need it. it. Just got on my face. Goodbye. Nasty strawberry transmission fluid. kind of wash this fluid out and see how much flux material is there. If it's, if it's uh, scary or not. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a lot, but it is what it is. Let's clean this pan out and we'll throw this thing back together. Thank you. Yeah. Alright, that'll do. Let me dry this off and we're gonna go ahead and put this thing back on. You know, a real quick thought. I'm gonna run up top and uh, spray a little bit more uh, brake clean down that funnel and maybe we can uh, flush out some more of what's inside of there before I refill this thing. Let's try that. See if it works. Are we getting anything? Oh yeah, here we are. Some more pink nasty. Let's get it all out of there. Cool, nice. All right, I think that's about as uh, clean as I can get things with a spray can. So uh, let's put this thing back together. Okay, pan's coming back in. Re, I know I used the same gasket, but that's how it's gonna be. I'm good with my reasons. I can sleep at night over it. If it were mine, that's what I would do. Okay. I'm just gonna get all these threaded, started by hand, and I'll, I'll hit them with the little zip gun. Actually, I'm gonna zip gun them in because that's a lot faster. It's on low power mode. I'm not stripping anything. Have no fear. You go low power mode first until it threads. If it gets hung up, immediately stop. The floor is covered in brake clean. Stinks. And I am missing one. It's gotta be in the pan. Where are you, last one? There it is. Got it. So, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this pan on, go back up top, Put a few quarts in it, start it, check the level, put the machine back up, and then perform uh, one more flush. And then add some conditioner. That's for good measure. Okay, so we're, uh, I think we're all tight down here. Yep, got all those. All right, good to go. Let's get out of here and uh, refill this unit. Don't need that gasket. That's the new one. All right, cobalt coming down. All the way down. 
All right, we're coming in with some new fluid. This is the good stuff. It's the bag in the box. VG quality. Let's get this guy opened up. I'll put about four quarts uh, or so in through the funnel and that's gonna refill the pan and then uh, the rest is gonna go in the machine and uh, I'll do a, a, another another flush on it. Fluid exchange, whoa! Oh, the ultimate pouring things. Yep, here we go. Here, let's go ahead and just refill this machine till it's, uh, it reaches its maximum capacity. And then I'm free to put the rest of this in the car. That's what I'll do. But there's no way I'm pouring this and holding a camera, so I had to put you guys down. Oop, too fast. I can pour it faster than it can fill. So I already have about four quarts in this machine when I started. It takes 16. And this is a 16 quart box, so theoretically I should fill the machine. And then there would be four quarts left over in the bag in the box. Mm -hmm, we're getting there. There's a little drain at the bottom in uh, that one right there. I've got the valve open. When uh, the machine is full, the fluid will start to run through that drain. Oop, I think we're close. It's gurgling at me. And it's no longer refilling. It's slowed down. There's a couple quarts left in the box, it feels like. And we should be seeing some flow. Yep, it's starting to run out. That's perfect. Come on, machine. Yeah, that's all she's gonna take. Okay, we'll close the valve. Put the lid back on so that stuff doesn't get contaminated. Close that, close that. We're ready to hook this thing back up to the car. But first, we're gonna finish this off with what's left in here. Then we're gonna, again, then we're gonna start this and run it and I'll pull the fill level plug on the side of the trans. And we'll make sure we start with a, uh, a full and accurate level. Sound like a plan? I think so. The machine has now been reconnected to the, uh, the radiator and the line. What we're gonna do is start this engine, lift this thing back up, we're gonna roll the drain back in, and there is a level uh, plug in the side of the transmission case, or actually it's in the front. We're gonna open up that plug. If the level is correct or even too high, we're gonna see fluid run out of that little fill plug thing. If it runs out, then uh, we're gonna let it run until it, uh, it starts to level off. We'll plug it back in and then we will restart the fluid exchange procedure with the uh, additional 16 quarts of the fresh, new, good stuff fluid. So uh, let's get to it. Restarting the engine. And of course, uh, since we made new connections, we're gonna do a leak check. Because what we don't want to do is have the line come off and spew fluid everywhere. And we don't want to leave either of those open because they will spew fluid everywhere. You see, we're still pretty pink. It's not processing, it's just bypassing right now. So this is the condition of what's inside of the unit. Pressures are coming up. Again, no leaks. No leaks down here. Let's go back up and pull that plug. Moving up. Hey, looky here. That blue is a little bit darker. That's good. It's very good. Okay, if memory serves, that little plug right there, that's the unit that we're looking for. So I'm gonna pull this guy out. And we should see fluid draining from that, uh, that orifice right there. If we do not, then that means that the transmission level is not full yet. Come on out of there. I'm really hoping. 
hoping it's uh, it's full because I don't have any uh, other bottles of cheapo fluid. I've used it all, and uh, I'm not interested in um, using my really nice expensive fluid, which means I'll have to order more bottles, and that will take more time. Let's see what we've got here. It's not full yet. We need to add more fluid to this. No worries. Okie dokes. I've had a delivery. Uh, one more gallon of fluid. Let's fill this thing up. And uh, again, we'll restart it. And then uh, pull that plug again. And uh, we'll let the, the level settle. Then again, we'll begin to flush. Broken record. So same thing 100,000 times. Tell you what, guys, this is like a super episode of pouring things. Like the whole thing has just been uh, pouring red fluid. Or dumping pink fluid. There we go. It's plenty. I know it's full. In fact, it's probably overfilled, but that's okay, because we're gonna pull that plug. And again, that's okay, because that's gonna help dilute the contaminated fluid one more time before we uh, do the flush. Restarting. No leaking. I'm always very weary when uh, the machines are connected, because things can go wrong. Okay, let's see what happens this time. We're gonna get some fluid. If it comes out red, I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in and let it all circulate and mix. I don't wanna waste good red fluid. Holy smoke. More. Okay. Okay, repeating myself again, uh, last order of fluid that I'm gonna put into this car. Last thing, let's try this one more time. Oh, there we go. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I'm determined to overfill this. And then do like a pre-flush flush exchange. Plus I gotta rinse out all that brake clean that I stuck in there. You, that can is already lubricated. Uh, not sponsored, that's just where I bought it from. Because I already bought all the fluid that the parts house had. Like this thing is gonna have the cleanest transmission ever. I think that's, I think that's four ports that I just put in. Maybe five. Ah, what's a couple more gonna hurt? Why not? This is five, I just counted. We'll do six. We'll do six, start it, run it, drain it, set level, flush it. That's the plan. On this ever-evolving non-plan plan. There we go. Okay, let's get out of here. Start it again, repeating myself again. Take 17 flushing transmission. Yeah, this is, this is the real life of the situation sometimes. We just do the same thing over and over and over again. Especially the dealership guys, they're always doing the same thing over and over and over again. All right, let's go check the plug. If we get fluid out the plug, then uh, I'll let it hang out for five, seven minutes and then we'll pull the plug out. See what we got here. All right, something's going on. We're leaking, it's already starting to leak. Let's see how much we get. Yeah, I didn't put that in very tight. It was just kind of finger tight. All 
right. It's a much darker red than uh, when we started. Good. Okay. What I'll do, I'm gonna let this run, circulate everything, and we're gonna pull that again, drain the fluid until that thing stops coming out of that hole right there. That's the, the top level fill hole. We're gonna let it run, drain that. Once the drain has stopped, I'm gonna go back up top, install another can of cleaner, and then we're gonna do the flush with the machine. Sound good? I think it does. Okay, going back in, it's been a little while, 15, 20 minutes, got distracted doing other stuff. Let us uh, let's pull this guy out, drain off the shoe. It's gonna take a while. Okay, uh, I need to pull this uh, this pin up and then just pull that plug all the way out because this is gonna drain like my Niagara style. Moving on up. All right, let's get in there and pop this little plug out. Come here, plug. We're gonna pull and run, all right? There it goes. Let it ride. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, we're still going. Good. I don't think that my oil drain tank can take much more of this. <laughs> Oops. Let's fill it up. Okay, so our gusher has uh, reduced itself to a slow dribble. That's, uh, it's nearing the full mark. As soon as that thing stops, it slows down to like a itty bitty little drip and we're good. All right, let's get our stuff out of the way. Letting this down again and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, start up the machine and let it, let it do its job. Let's see how this comes out. This is the third and uh, final attempt to clean all this stuff out it's no longer thick and frothy and it's the normal uh, normal viscosity at this point but it does have the wrong color telling me there is still some contaminant present but it's uh, better than it was all right well here goes nothing pressure pressure fluid condition fire it up the machine's going, so it's now exchanging what is inside of the unit with uh, the clean side on this unit right here. It's doing it with the power of the pump. There's our new fluid going in. I need to see this turn red. Or redder. Reddish. More redder-er. Okay, we're getting there. The pink is starting to fade. Sweet. It's still a little cloudy, but it's getting there. Come on, clear up. Please, please, please. I want to see that nice and cherry red. The pressures are still equal, so that tells me it's still, uh, it's still exchanging. This is good. Yeah, nice color. It's getting darker. Still a little cloudy, but it's getting darker. Yes. By the way, the uh, transmission cooler inside of the radiator is also part of this circuit, so that fluid's being exchanged as well. Cleared up a little bit. Oh, there's our pressure drop. And we got a pressure rise on that side. We are done. System exchange is complete. Let's go ahead and shut the car down, swap the lines out, and we'll take this on the road and see how it does. Fingers crossed. Powering down. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got a can of uh, conditioner right here as well. We're gonna throw that in there. 
It's supposed to uh, rejuvenate the seals and help the clutches survive catastrophic events. Let's toss this stuff in. Okay, line disconnect. We'll pull the fittings first. There's one. And, uh, where are you? There's number two. Whoop. Fitting gravity. You know, I must say, the uh, condition of uh, that return fluid once the service was complete was uh, better than I expected. Yeah, look at that, nice and red. That's cool. I'd say we got an extremely high percentage of the contaminant removed from the system. Come out. Give me back my fitting, please. There we go. Now it is very important that I return this clip to its, its connector and, uh, and not lose it. So uh, I'm gonna try that right now. If it slips and I lose it, it's gonna fly off because I have to kind of spring load it to get it to go on. Awkward angle. Hmm. Uh-oh, I'm kind of in trouble now. I wonder if I can push it on instead of pulling it on. Mm, no, oh, I'm dropping it. Hang on, I need to recoup here. I'm gonna let this car down some more so I can lean in a little bit harder. This is, uh, this is not gonna work. Come out, please. And I, I'm really in trouble if I drop it because it's not shiny and chrome like they usually are. Here, let's try again. I'll switch hands and use the uh, the dominant right hand. Hmm. No. Oh, come on, clip. It may have been less effort to uh just use the tool on this one. Hmm. Insert foot in mouth, eating words. It's because you guys are all watching. I'm, I'm, it's making me nervous. Any other day I could do this, no problem, I swear. Almost. I think I got it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. No, I don't. Urgh. Here, let's try it with a tool. Maybe I can do it with a tool. Fat chance. Okay. Good solid click on the line. We'll put our little safety plastic thing back in. I'll put this little plastic clip down there back on, the one I neglected last time, because I uh, knew we were gonna do this. Put that guy back. All right, lines are on. Ooh, but, oh, 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 I gotta tighten up the drain plug down there. And uh, then we should be good to go here. Put our caps and stuff back in position. I don't need to forget those. That would be bad. I'm highly unprofessional. Oh, there it is. Got it, okay. All right, let's get out of here. Now, I know that the astute amongst you are aware that I have not put this engine cover back on. I didn't forget, no worries. Real quick, let's get this out of here. Uh oh, there's some spillage down there. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We gotta undo that. Unacceptable. Ah, another. There, we'll try again. With a new one. Yeah, rinse off all that nasty and spillage and everything else. 
probably hose this down one more time before I'm done here, but can't have that stuff just sitting around. Gross. So anyway, as I was saying, all I've got to do is get this cover back on. Then uh, we're gonna go out for a test drive and see if this thing is gonna gonna move. Now remember, I have a uh, not yet driven this vehicle. Kick. Shiny. All right, to the road we go. All right, moment of truth. Ow. Starting the engine. Here we go. All right, it went in reverse. It went into forward gears. Is it gonna move? Yeah. All right, it's moving. Let's get out of here and see if it's gonna shift. I really hope this thing, uh, it shifts, because I don't want to put a transmission in this. And I don't think that the guy that owns it wants to put a transmission in it either, so uh, fingers crossed. I think it's going to be okay. We'll see. Time will tell, actually. It may work today, and it may crap out in a month, or in an hour, or in two weeks. So, yeah, you never know. I mean, it's it's it was swimming in lubricant that was not actually lubricant. And I fear for the clutches. We'll find out. Ding, text message. Get the gate real quick. You guys stay here. There we go. All right, let's ride. Ring, ring. Clear both sides, cool. All right, we're in first gear. There's second. Third. Still in third. But it shifted. Let's see if it downshifts. Come on, green light. We're waiting. Never made it to fourth gear. I'd like to at least catch fourth on the straightaway. Nice wheels. Lift kit on a charger. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right, first gear. Second gear, I'm in the throttle a little bit this time. And third gear, so far so good. I don't want to speed, so I'm assuming it's gonna catch fourth. Tell you what, what we'll do is we'll go down here and do a cop scan and then we'll catch forth on the way back. Let's do a downshift. Cool, downshift worked. Yeah, let's flip this thing around. You know, I, I really want to feel good about this, but at the same time, I, I've got to be incredibly skeptical because I know what this transmission just went through. And so I want to jump for joy, but I also don't want to like hex myself and uh and wind up with a problem so i'm just going to kind of keep quiet on it and i'm going to let the situation speak for itself but so far so good let's see if we can't get fourth if we get fourth um i'll be good to go back and park it there we go third gear Yep, there we go. There's third gear, fourth gear, fourth gear. There's fourth. Sweet. All right, it's got all four gears. I think this is just a four speed. It's got fourth gear. Oh, yellow light, floor it. It's the Florida way. All right. All right, guys, uh, so far, so good. Uh, this thing's in good shape, so I'm headed back to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and park it. I'm gonna wash it off. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, well, close this video out, because uh, I, I believe I'm all done with this thing for the time being. So uh, that being said, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoy this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below.
Uh, what are your thoughts on the future of this transmission? I'd like to hear about that in the comment section. Do you think it's gonna hold up to the test of time or do you think it's a time bomb? Uh, weigh in down below and, uh, and we'll see what the audience thinks. All right, back at the shop. I'm just gonna hose this off and we're all set here. So again, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Cobalt.